Making an organic wallstone pattern might be one of the hardest things to achieve in Substance Designer. That is why today I will show you how you can build an interesting pattern for this month's Rock and Stone Community Challenge at FMA. Now let's get started. Now uh, you can see here, I already make a test to build an interesting, or let's say not usual, yes, wallstone pattern. As you can see, it's working actually quite well. We have the shapes and of course this is not finished. This is not something I would check as finished as it's matching a lot of details that we should add further into this material. But let's go step by step and do what I did in order to get this. So the first part would come on this side. So the first part is to actually build a procedural pattern. Now this might not look that much of a procedural as you might have to get into and change the, part, the, the amount of tiling on the X and Y amount of these two tile generators but there's no actually no need for it if you actually know how to combine them into an exposed parameter where they both change at the same time. Now let's get over this. Now for this I usually create a tile generator which I'm gonna set a 5x10 with a size of a square and I'm gonna scale this down until I have something like this and go to the bottom of the node and change the luminance random to 0 0.5 and the blending mode to max. Once this is done I'm gonna increase again my scale till I get to 1 and start to play around with the offset. I'm gonna just set it to 0.5 and then increase the offset random just by a little bit, yes? Now I want to have variation in the actual shape of my stone so I'm gonna increase a little bit the scale random just a little bit and with that I'm also going to increase my overall scale. With it also I want to have different shapes, you know, kind of lengths and heights from stone. So I'm going to go here to my intersize X and intersize Y and I'm going to add a really small amount like minus 1, sorry, minus, minus 0 0.1 for both of them. Now all stones are going to actually act the same way. So what I'm going to do is start playing around with a random parameter. But in fact, I should remove the intersize Y. I just gonna generate some artifacts later. I want them to have all the same. In fact, let's just remove a little bit this. Yeah, there we go. I have them all the same size. We want them to be exactly the same size and you're gonna see the result later. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this here. Yes, and we're gonna play a little bit with these parameters to change this into something smaller. We wanna have a big line of big stones and a smaller one where you are gonna have the main amount of stones which are gonna be the, the, the tiniest of them all. So I have a five by 10. If I increase this by 15, yes, and this to 10, I'm gonna have the same amount of shapes, yes, but with a different size. But it's kind of like tiling because I'm maintaining the relationship between these two parameters. So as long as I keep on increasing the same amount in each of these parameters, I'm gonna maintain the ratio. That means if I get this to 15 and this one to 20, I'm basically having the same shapes, yes, but in a smaller size. So let's get back. Now, the secret to these kind of patterns is actually the masking, and it's the most important part of all. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a blend node, yes, and you're going to put your smaller uh, pattern in the background and your bigger one to the foreground, and you're going to leave this at copy mode. We're going to create a shape node now, yes, to which we're going to create after that a transform. Now, what you want to do here is you want to go to your base parameters and change your tiling mode to absolute and change this to no tiling we don't want this to tile and the following thing is we're going to get the center of your image that is this circle you have in the middle and we're going to align it with this bottom line of the image yes that means the end of the image and we're going to have that line in the middle of the circle now that we have this what you're going to see is that half of our image is white and the other half is black now if i come here and start playing with my x you're going to see i'm just going to change where the white area is on the sides but if I start playing with this I'm starting to play with the actual height of it you see so how is this gonna be useful for us well if I come here and input this into the copy you see that now I am blending both results and I have this pattern and this pattern yeah so if I take this to an edge detect now you're gonna see the result that is actually quite good 
we now have a specific pattern that we can use. And this is a technique you can use for any kind of tile material, yes? Now, I'm gonna leave this kind of like this, but I'm gonna add some details before that. So for these kind of operations, I like adding my details before, yes, in my cells pattern, kind of like this. So I have something already built here. You can try and use whatever you need, depending on your reference. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the ones I already made to give it more of like a rocky kind of style, as you can see here. So basically I'm using a directional warp and a warp to generate motion with a clouds too. Now, some of these might be too hard, as you can see. Maybe this one should be a little bit less. There we go. And the result is gonna be really good, as you can see here. Now we need to go to the next step. So I wanted to make something a little bit rocky, but at the same time maintaining center level of consistency. So what I did here is I created first my rock detail. For this, I'm gonna build a flat fill, and from this flat fill, we're gonna get a flat fill to gradient. Now we're gonna use a lot of these nodes. So what we did need to do first, you need to set the angle variation to one, and then we're gonna create four variations of this. Now each of these variations, we should change the random seed. So none of them are similar, and the gradients on each of our stones are looking into a different direction. So let's check this. So we have zero, one, and one again. So this one should be two, and this one should be three. There we go. Now we're gonna blend all of these together using a min mode on your blend. So let's just get this. And we're gonna blend the result of our blend node with the following gradient. Now we have our kind of stone shape. If I pull this inwards, you're gonna see that our uh, bricks are starting to have these kind of gradients that usually stone have, but this is not finished yet. So let's see. First, I want to have my levels and I have one around here. I'm going to just copy this one. I'm going to show you first why do we have this as well. So as you can see here, yes, I have a levels that I'm going to plug here. And usually your levels will be like this. And you're going to have these kind of sharp edges that you can see in, your, in, in, in this image. But if I move the blacks to the right, What's going to happen is I'm going to start to have this kind of shapes, meaning you're going to have to start some gradients that are going to make the cuts less sharp on it. So I'm just going to use this one, yeah, which already has the specific um, amount I need. And later, I want to make my stones more soft in the, their overall shape. So I'm going to use a non-uniform blur, yeah. This is going to allow me to soften a little bit those edges so this is not that strong. Now, the non-uniform blur is actually quite amazing because it was going to help you to build more soft and round shapes. Like, for example, if I keep increasing this, this is just going to get more softer. And if I then add the levels, I can control this information to make something new, as you can see here. See? Now, this is not looking good or nearly close to what we want. So, let's get back to this. Yes, let's get this into a value of one. Let's just go into here and see what's going on. So here I blend the information we have before from our edge detect with the actual information that we built here. Now, what I did here is I built, as I just showed you, yes, a specific size of zone. Yes, a shape as well. So let me show you how it's gonna look here. Basically, I'm getting a non-uniform, yes, and creating this kind of soft, stones that you can see here and then using a levels to give them a little more of shape now the secret comes here so i'm inverting the result of these stones so i get this kind of gradients with a subtract that way i'm cutting certain information from these stones taking from these ones now if i don't invert this information what's going to happen is the stones are going to look like this and we don't want that so i'm just going to invert it and we're gonna have something more similar to what we were looking for. Now, of course, there's something missing here, and it's these levels. Again, it's gonna help us achieve what we want into the shapes. Now, once again, this looks way too much, and something we're missing here is a safe from, from Grayscale. So I'm gonna input this here, yes, get it to the edge detect, and you're gonna see that this might even break a little bit, and the reason for that is because our edge detect has a lot of edge width, as well, a lot of edge roundness to it. So I'm just gonna give something like this maybe. See how it works. There we go. So now you have, yes, a procedural tile pattern of stones that you can use for your material in the challenge. Now you can change this as ever you want. We can change this to 10 by five. 
and the zones are gonna be just bigger. Or again, I'm just gonna leave it at 10 by 10 and they are gonna look more like cobblestones at this point, you can see. And as well, I can change actually the height of this. So I'm gonna be able to choose how much amount I want to have on certain specific parts of the material and other parts I might not want to have it as well. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can create so many stones with these techniques, but if you still need help, I would suggest you join our Discord community by clicking on the link that you can find in the description of this video. We are currently hosting a community challenge called Rock and Stone Material, where you can win tons of free learning content provided by professionals from our sponsor, Fast Track Tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in our next chapter.